I'm Kevin. And I'm Randy. Howdy. And we work for the customer care web support team. We get a lot of questions from customers asking us you know, how to fix problems with their, with their PCs. And so today we're here to talk about wireless keyboards and mice and you know, how to fix problems with them as well as how they work. Yeah, I know I've had times when I'm in online gaming and I just want to check that mouse right out the window. So this is a good topic. That's good. So let's just start with the, you know, the very basic, like my mouse, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay, so right. how does it not work? Is, is it the mouse and keyboard? What's going well, on here? The keyboard, I don't know. That's not really so much my problem. It's the mouse. You see when I move it here? It's not uh, doing it's not anything. Moving. Okay, so, uh, well, it's probably your batteries, but um, it could be other things as well, and there's some things you'd want to try before you replace them. So let's, let's get to it. All right, so what's, what's the first thing I do? Well, since your mouse isn't working, right, or it isn't moving, I would go ahead and uh, check the underside. Some mice just have a little on-off switch. Yeah. So yours does, so that says it's an optical mouse. Go ahead and, uh, even if it says it's on, go ahead and toggle it. Okay. Right. Maybe this one was off. Yeah, see the light come on there? That yep. tells you oh, that. There it is. Yeah. So that's probably it. Go ahead and uh, give it a try. Okay. Still uh, nothing. Lights on, no one's home. Okay, so what do you think you do next? I don't know. You tell me. Okay, well, <laughs> what I would do is I would just go ahead and restart the PC. Maybe things are just locked up because... Well, how do I do that? I mean, I can't press start. Right, your mouse isn't working, so you're going to have to press the power button on the front of the PC. Okay, so just shutting it down, so like... Yep, just press it once, okay. and then if it doesn't shut down like it's not doing now, go ahead and press and hold the power button for five seconds or until it turns okay, off. Okay, okay. Okay, well, your PC's up now, so... Okay. It started. Is it working? It's still not working. All right, well, let's go ahead and check the batteries. Go ahead and replace them. Okay, so we can just, just replace them? Uh-huh. So, to change these, you've got to turn it over, and then there's a little bit lip in here that you'll want to put your fingernail in and just kind of pop it open. And then there's this little tab you can pull to get the batteries out pretty easily. There should be a diagram. Yeah, you'll notice in here that there's a little diagram that shows the batteries, the uh, plus or minus side. And you want to make sure you get those in there correct. Um, I know I have put them in backwards before and thought that it was the mouse, but it was really me. Okay. So there we go. One's in. And, you know, when I'm changing batteries in my mice, I like to also do it in the keyboard just so I know that they're, you know, all fresh and all the same. Yeah, that's a good idea. So on the keyboard here. So while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and say a few things about batteries. Um, you definitely want to use batteries from um, like store-bought batteries, fresh alkaline batteries from the same package, if at all possible. That will give you the most life. Um, you don't. You kind of want to shy away from the rechargeable ones just because you won't get as much charge time or use time uh, from those. Also, you don't want to mix and match your batteries. You do not want to take one that's already been used for a couple of weeks and put a new one in there to try to, because you've only got one battery laying around, that also will uh, decrease the battery life and your use. So, all right, looks like we're back on. Um, it's moving now. I can see it on here, but uh, I don't know. If it it's doesn't not really. Look, yeah, it doesn't look like it's tracking too well. Yeah, it's not sticking with what I'm moving to. It's so things that can cause that when it doesn't track really well, things in the environment can cause it, like fluorescent lights, cell phones, uh, even speakers. Um, but typically that's intermittent. It'll kind of right. knock it out, but it'll still work decently. What it's, it looks like something else is going on here. It might be dirty underneath, okay. like a little hair or something around the light sensor area. Right. Um, but you don't really have a mouse pad or anything, and, it, and it, your surface... Uh, if it's glossy, it can cause it to kind of not track well. Okay. You want a nice flat mat. So let's get yeah, you a mouse a pad so that and see it. if that helps. There, right. try that. All right. Oh, hey. Smooth as so. All right. Now it feels very good. It's moving exactly as I expect. Yeah, it's looking better. All right. So that's the mouse. But uh, what if it's the keyboard? You know, I've seen times you're typing, it skips letters, or there's a mm. lag between what you're doing. Keyboard lag. Um, typically, that's caused by software, right? Okay. So, like if your software is under heavy load, like it, Windows has got a virus scan going in the background, um, so you got a lot of things going on while you're trying to do something else, um, then the system's just busy and it's not it doesn't have the time to present what you're typing onto the screen because it's off busy doing other things. Right. So the best thing you can do there is to 
like uninstall software that you don't use anymore, prevent software from loading with Windows, you know, and close everything down before you work on your typing. Okay. So what you're saying is pretty much if you've got a lot of things going on and you notice it's kind of lagging, maybe shut a few applications down. Exactly. Or notice if it's happening just in one application versus maybe another one. Mm -hmm. so now it can also be caused by the length, the distance to the receiver. Okay. Right. Also, if like your keyboard isn't isn't working, but your mouse is, but it's still kind of skipping. Another thing that can that you probably want to do is resynchronize your devices or synchronize, synchronize the mouse and keyboard to the receiver. So you know you're talking about synchronizing and all that's getting kind of technical. You know maybe we need somebody to come in and try and help explain some of this technical stuff. Somebody like Bill. Bill's great at this kind of thing. So hey, why don't we have Bill come in? Hey, I'm Bill. So what are you guys doing here? heard you talking about synchronization. Right. So trying to understand, you know, Randy was talking about, uh, you know, to fix wireless keyboard and mouse problems, sometimes you have to synchronize them up again or something. And there's something about a receiver. So I don't know if you can exactly. explain what all that is. You bet. So when you talk about synchronization with the keyboard, mouse, and the receiver, basically you have three devices that need to talk together, right? So during a startup of the PC, the receiver actually tells BIOS that it's there, and the keyboard is then active. So you can press a key and go into BIOS. That's all that you require to get in there. OK, so just a second here. You're saying something about a, OK, so there's a receiver, and there's a BIOS thing. So what, what is this receiver thing? Is there? Right. Randy, why don't you pull the receiver off the back there, and we'll show you. OK. So this is what the receiver looks like. And it looks like a USB thumb drive. Okay. And it's very similar to that. Has a connect button. There's some that don't but this one does have a connect button. What this does is this actually tells the computer or the BIOS, basic input-output information or system, that uh, what, it's, what it actually is. So there's actually um, circuitry on the dongle here or the receiver that tells it what it is. Okay, so the BIOS then is on the PC and it's telling it what's coming into the PC and what's going on. You said basic right. input-output? Yep. Right. All that does is that helps start the computer and tell the computer what's on there. Okay. okay. And that can work even if it doesn't work in Windows. So I'm in Windows and you can still use the keyboard? You can still use the keyboard outside of Windows. Okay. And that's what the, what the USB and the BIOS work together. Okay. Once you get into Windows, then you have other things. You have the driver, you have uh, the registry, you have software or applications that have to work together with the keyboard and mouse. Okay, one more thing you said that I didn't understand there. So registry. So The registry. Registry is basically just a database. And the database has information about the receiver, about the mouse, and about the keyboard to tell it what they can actually do and how they actually interact with the operating system. Okay, so it's, it's telling the computer hey, this is what I know about these things here, and this is how they can be used in Windows. Exactly. Okay, I exactly. think I get that. Okay. <laughs> so with synchronization, there's a couple of different kinds of receivers that we have, like I said before. This one actually has the connect button on it, and when you push that button, it's kind of hard to push, so you use your fingernail. It turns blue. Okay. And when it turns blue, that means that it's looking for a signal. And when it's looking for a signal, then you can use the keyboard or mouse the connect button on the back of them, so on the keyboard, okay. you'll notice there is a connect button up in there. Okay. And once the receiver is flashing, then you push the connect button, and the connect button sends a signal, similar like when you're trying to synchronize your Bluetooth headset with your uh, cell phone. Okay, so it's saying, this one here is saying, hey, I'm looking for things, who wants to come hang out with me, and this one, now you're pushing this in. I do. Yep, Okay. exactly. And then once that keyboard is recognized by the receiver, you can do the same exact process for the mouse. Then on the back of the mouse, you have the connect button as well. Okay. So again, same thing as this thing's back here, telling the computer that it has these items. These guys come in and say, hey, I know you. Now the computer. That's how it works. Okay. So that's what syncing is. So that's what making them all is. work together. Got it. So, yeah. okay. A couple of tips for syncing. If it's not synchronized and you need to synchronize it, you might want to, if you have a USB port on the front of your PC, which this one okay. does, yep. we could use the front of it and that way we can see visually when the synchronizing starts. All right. So that blue Let's button. Let's try that. I mean, I'd like to see it kind of how you this bet. all works. So. And when you plug in, you have to wait for a second or two to make sure that the USB oh. device 
is actually recognized by the system. Oh, hey, look, and you'll yeah. see some information in the, what we call a sys tray or the, just the little area down by your, your clock and your, uh, your uh, calendar. Okay. So now this one just says your device is ready to use. So we know that it recognizes it now. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to press and hold the connect button for about five seconds, five to ten seconds right in there. Okay. Depending on how fast you count. All right. So it's going to get one, two, three, four, five. And there it is. It's hey, flashing. there it goes. It's blinking. Exactly. My clock so work. now um, what the receiver is doing is it's sending out a signal or it's waiting for a signal to be received. Okay. And that receiving signal comes from either your keyboard or your mouse. So what we would do now is we're going to turn the keyboard over and you're going to push and hold that connect button until that blue button or the blue light stops flashing on the connect. All right. Now to do this, you have to be about 60 seconds total time is what that receiver is looking for. Okay, so, so we have to, oh, so we got to do it like starting you now. Got, yeah, start it now. How long do I hold this? About five to ten seconds. About same thing. Yep. Three, four, five. <laughs> exactly. And hey. look, stop okay. flashing. It stopped. So now your keyboard is synchronized with that receiver. Okay. You follow that exact same process for the mouse. Okay. Here. Now remember, the exact same process means we have to push the connect button first. Oh, that's right. Because the receiver is no longer looking for a signal. We sent it the signal and now it sees it. Okay, so it needs a second time. Right. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five. And there you go. And there and we it's go. Flashing. All right. So now we do the same thing over on this side. Yep. Alright, there's that connect button. You push and hold that. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> All right. And it stopped flashing. Hey, so now, there we go. whenever you move the mouse or push a key, you'll see the light turn on as well. And that means that it's receiving a signal. Hey, what do you know? See, you're so smart. <laughs> it works. Great. All right, so let's summarize. Uh, you know, we kind of talked about a lot of things here. So the mouse and the keyboard, they have to talk to this thing, which is then talking to the computer, and the computer is telling it how to show up in Windows and move around on here. That's correct. Okay. Okay. I think I get that. That's yeah. the syncing part you're talking about, everything kind right. of working together. And with synchronization, there's just one other thing you might want to keep in mind, and that's the dongle that the receiver may not have a connect button on it. Oh, it, so it may not, that little thing I had to push in the right. lights. Okay. The touch smart there doesn't have a connect button on the receiver because it's harder to get to. And so Randy's turning it around for us just so we can see how you get to the receiver, possibly to reset it, to reseat it into that spot, or to move it to a different USB spot. Okay, so it's up inside here? Yes, and, and you use your fingernail oh, and you pull it out. Yeah, there we go. And, and it, it looks real there. similar. Yep. Yeah, so it does. There's a little place where I hooked my fingernail into and it came right out. Yep. And you'll notice there's no connect button. Right. But what you can do is you can plug that into one of the side USB ports. Um, okay, like to see here. Right. Just to make sure that it's synchronizing, especially when you're troubleshooting something, you want to eliminate any um, you know, variables right. in doesn't, the If it doesn't work in one port, try it in another and see if there was right. something to make it think again. Yep. Okay, okay, I get that. So then just to get it back in there, I hope I can... Hey, actually, that wasn't so hard. Not very difficult <laughs> at all. That's great. Do you have any other questions? No, I think that's it. I get it. You know, and now they're all talking together, and that's uh, you know what makes them run. But it's a lot that goes on. I can see why they have problems. They can. Well, thanks a lot for <laughs> right, having thanks. me. Thanks. Hey, we'll see, see you around. Later. Yeah. So, Randy. That Billy's a smooth guy, isn't he? He is. I like that Billy. Sure helps a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, did he teach you everything you needed to know? Are you fixed? Well, I think I understand better, you know, how this all works and where problems can be. And we did get it going, but, you know, I'm wondering, uh, what if we did that and it still didn't work? I mean, I hate to say that it wouldn't work at this point, but what if it didn't? You know, what if the well, hardware is bad? How do I know that? Well, if it's the hardware, right, you can take the, the, well, the receiver, the keyboard, and the mouse, take it to another PC. Like if you have another notebook or something or a friend, take it over there, plug it in, see if it works. If it works, great, you know, then you know at least the hardware is good. Um, if it doesn't work on your friend's PC, then you're looking at the, maybe the hardware's bad for some reason. Maybe it got damaged or something. Right. Uh, but you know, if, if it does work, bring it back to your PC. Try it again. If it doesn't still work on your original PC, then 
you're probably looking at a Microsoft System Restore to okay. go back because remember that Bill talked to you about the registry? Right, right. If, if it's misenumerated in the registry, if things got kind of messed up and that um, database is wrong, then or a driver problem. The only way to really else. get back from that is a system restore or an HP system recovery. Okay, so system restore. I mean, I kind of understand these things, but just real quick, where would you find system restore if you if you wanted to try rolling just Windows back before you went the whole route of recovering? All right. Okay, so system restore. You don't have to save your files or anything like that, and it's available through the Windows Start menu. You just click Start, uh, All Programs. You come up here to Accessories. And then you go down to a fo uh, folder here called System Tools, and it's inside there. All you do is you click System Restore. It comes up. You say Next. Select a date when you knew it was working properly, and then click Next and follow the prompts. Okay. That'll take your whole system back to a time when it was working properly. Right. A lot of times it doesn't work. So if, it so. Do if you can't do it and it comes up and says, a message comes up and says you can't perform a System Restore, then you're pretty much left with the system recovery. Right. So, HP so if it doesn't work recovery. or whatever comes back, then you kind of have to take an even more drastic step and start it all over yeah, with the recovery. Make sure you save your files. You right. don't want to blow away all your hard work. Yeah, here. system recovery is, you know, it's, it's a pretty big thing. It's going to wipe out everything on your hard drive and put it right back to the way it was when you first bought it and turned it on. So save any personal files or anything before you do this step, but this is one of those surefire ways to, if it's something software related, this will take care of it. Right, and HP's placed the recovery program in a couple of different spots. Um, the way I get to it is I click the start button, I go up to all programs, and for this particular PC, it's under, it's right there on the main menu, it says recovery manager. A lot of times you'll also find it in this little folder here called PC help and tools, uh, but you just select recovery manager, and then you just click System Recovery and follow the prompts. Okay. All right, so we've now proved uh, the hardware works or doesn't. We've done all we can with the software, so it either works or it doesn't. At this point, I don't know that there's much more you can do. Hey, that's all I've got. I hope this helped you. See you around like a donut. Yeah.